Happy Tuesday, Kay Bates here. Today I am here with Lee and we are going to be talking about realtor safety and how to keep real estate safe and great again. Hi Lee. Hey, good morning Kay. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I am excited. I met Lee at the caravan, Carlsbad Caravan, and I am one of those realtors that really have not been paying attention to my surroundings. So I was so glad to meet you to find out the things that I could do to keep myself safe when I'm at an open house or just showing houses all together. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So tell me, just tell us a little bit about you first without you know sure. giving away too much. Sure, I'm a, a retired Marine Corps officer Ooh. and uh, then I uh, worked for a long time training Marines in some observation and surveillance systems and I went back to school and earned a master's degree in anti-terrorism and homeland security. And wow. my focus was human behavior and human behavior in a threat environment. And so I wow. um, have done a lot of work overseas, but now uh, I'm focusing more on what we can do to give back to the community to make our community safer. And I, I know that uh, Real estate agents, uh, and especially female real estate agents, are, are at risk by the virtue of their very job. Yes. And so uh, that's why I offer these training courses. Wow, very, very powerful, great information. Uh, what kind of courses do you offer? Well, we've got a, a basically a course that runs for either an entire day, but it's broken down into training modules that okay. uh, are... Uh, two hours and four hours in length. Oh, wow. Um, and, and basically what we do is we teach and retrain the brain first. The first module of all of our training is called the art and science of visual intelligence. And what wow. that means is retraining the human brain to look at and see more details in everything that they do. I think I need that course. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, once we start to retrain the brain to look at things in more detail, then we can start teaching you how to read human behavior, how to read nonverbal behavior, and notice small changes in behavior of someone during the course of a conversation or how they're sitting, and that, that uh, tells you a lot of information. And so this basically uh, is not only for your, excuse me, your, uh, recognition of potential threats, but also being able to recognize emotions and questions that people have that they do not articulate. Oh, yeah, that's powerful. Really good information. So I hope you're not checking me out, like figuring <laughs> out what I'm, what my motives are. <laughs> no, no, but, but oftentimes in, in a uh, customer response, you can read a customer and see that they have questions or they have some concerns and start to address those before yeah. they even ask the question. And what that does is they then immediately say, wow, this is really a sharp real, real estate, estate agent. Yeah, and you are uh, by virtue of being able to read people even that much better. God, that is really, really good. I'm really gonna have to check out the course and where would we find a course that you would offer or something like that? Well, I'm trying to work with some real estate organizations to offer the courses during the year when they have maybe symposiums. Okay. And I can offer the courses in conjunction with the symposiums or if there's a larger real estate office that has, let's say, 25 to 30 agents, right. uh, we can offer a course for those agents uh, in, in part of their regular weekly uh, work and training. Uh, I'll be happy to, to work with them and uh, wow. work with their training training department or with them uh, as a real estate organization. Wow. That's really good news. So there's a lot of large brokerages out there. I mean, there's mom and pop, but all the way to some brokerage has 300 agents. I think this is really vital information for us. We know that uh, there's so many agents. We put our lives in danger whenever we step out. We take people into our cars. Uh, we 
could do open houses alone. Um, and it's not just for us females, but also for men. Mm -hmm. So if you can you know, tell us some of your experience, some things that you've heard of how not just women are accosted or you know, crimes are committed against us, but also well, men. Exactly, St statistically across the board, uh, females are the uh, primary target of most of the assaults or most of the criminal activity in the real estate industry. However, uh, for men, oftentimes in, in open houses or in showings, uh, they may be robbed. Um, and those are principally the things that happen to, to males. For females, uh, they may be not only robbed, but accosted mm -hmm. and, uh, and assaulted. And so one of the things that I speak about almost initially in the training of uh, real estate agents is what is your exit plan? When, when you go into a house uh, and take a customer or even showing at an open house, what is your exit plan to get out of there in case something bad happened? And you need to know that if I go through the sliding glass door right here on the back, and if I turn left, there's no gate. It's right. a closed fence. Oh my you gosh. have to know that. Yeah. So that you're not in high heels trying to climb over a six foot fence but if you turned the opposite direction, now there's a gate there and it leads directly out to your car. Yes, I, that is so true. I know that before I met you, I would go into an open house, just set up, la di da you know, signs are up and I'm ready to show house, not looking for, hey, you know, is there an exit? If something mm -hmm. was to happen, uh, how am I going to get out? Or how can I alert somebody else that something was going on with me? So great yeah. information. And exactly. And we also talk about technology because technology, everybody wants to use technology and leverage technology. And I understand that. But we talk about technology with respect to the good parts of technology, the bad parts of technology, and the liabilities that technology can create by such a heavy reliance on it. What if you rely on cell phone apps that all of a sudden you're showing a house that there is no cell coverage? Yeah. And you need to know that beforehand so that you're not relying on something that's not going to be there when you uh, have to uh, need it per chance. Very true, because I do a lot of rural showings mm -hmm. and a lot of times there's no service halfway on the way there or I get there and there is absolutely uh, no service at all. And so, yeah, you can't, you can't even do an emergency call because there's nothing. Your phone's pretty much you know, out of existence. So that's some very good pointers. Uh, what are some tips, other takeaway tips that we should know about? Like, uh, you know, are there, you know, I know there's certain alarms now. Um, what would you recommend for us to use? Well, I would, I would recognize, I would recommend starting with looking at human behavior first okay. so that you can recognize the indicators of potential threat before it becomes uh, too great. Right. That's one of the first things that I would do is study human behavior. Uh, the other thing is uh, looking at blind spots, blind spots in your organization. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes the, the uh, organizational protocols or procedures are developed to increase business, not with a, uh, an eye to security. So what we do is look at the security protocols in your offices, and some of those, do they make you safer, uh, or are they just there as, uh, say, well, we've gotta have some kind of procedures, so we'll make these things up. Right. And actually, some of those procedures can make you more vulnerable uh, in the process. And so we look at blind spots in an organization, as well as blind spots like in your car. Right. When you're driving to those remote spots, how often do you check your emergency equipment? Yeah. Uh, things like that. Uh, an office should ensure that their agents have uh, equipment, emergency equipment as well, and that they know how to use it. So it's, that's how we're looking at increasing your, your safety and right. your security across the board um, for for all of the agents, not just uh, the female agents. Right. That's good, that's good. I am so glad that you were here. Um, so before we go, anything else that you think we should know? Uh, 
What about mace? Should we really be carrying? Should we really be carrying mace? Well, I, mace might not be such a bad thing, but uh, oftentimes I've I've read that uh, one of the things that you do if you're doing a, an open house, mm -hmm. do not leave your purse or your wallet or anything like that out in the open. Put it into a cupboard. Well, right. if you need it, guess where it is? It's in the <laughs> cupboard in your purse. <laughs> And so yeah. it, it, it may, uh, on occasion, become a very good asset. But if if you leave it uh, yeah. hidden in a cupboard, uh, then it uh, would be kind of challenging to get to it. You, you can't That's just true. say time out to someone who's attacking you and say, let me go get my mace. That's and, very true. Uh, I'll be I'll be back in just yeah. a second. So the keys before we go, make sure, check your environment. You know, be aware, make sure you check for blind spots, enroll, I'll find out how we can get a hold of Lee so we can find out when we can have classes, or make sure, leave a comment, like our video, check us out on, you know, like the YouTube channel, subscribe, because we're going to continue to bring valuable information like this. This was really great. I really thank you. I really, really, really appreciate your yeah, advice here today. Welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.